Contractors, Brian Allen's here. Contractors, contractor, dominate your trade podcast. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different, but probably the most important called mental martial arts. Defend yourself against your toughest opponent, you. The only thing holding you back, the only thing holding your business back is you. If your life sucks right now, if your business sucks right now, only thing making it suck is you. I know you don't want to hear that. This ain't a motivational speech. Uh, stick around. You need to hear what I'm talking about. So uh, a disclaimer, you, uh, you may want to turn this off right now, even if you're, no matter when you're watching it, anyway, uh, you can come in here, you can watch this with all the excuses, but by the end of the day, when we're finished, you don't get to leave here with the excuses. We got big Doug in the house, driving home from New York, heading over to New Jersey. Uh, mental martial arts, before we get in it, I'm going to rant a little bit. I'm going to think about, I'm going to start doing a live rant once a day, because I see so much stupid shit on Facebook. I just need to yell about it and answer about it. Talking to a guy uh, last week, uh, hit me up uh, his Facebook ads and doing some other stuff. And I don't know, I, I rub people the wrong way. And I guess I'm okay with that because uh, I don't have anything to sell you. I'm just trying to share the stuff that I've learned over the last 30 years that uh, I, I'm not guessing about. I know it works. It's worked for me several times. It's worked for a lot of my friends, and it works for contractors who take the advice and uh, take action. But this guy, you know, I tried to tell him, uh, he asked me, well, how do you know this thing ain't working? And I said, well, he, this dude's spending 8000 a month on marketing. His website sucks. He doesn't show up on Google My Business. He's not running Google Ads. The only thing he is doing is some Facebook and Instagram stuff, and he had to fire the guy that was running his Facebook ads. I said, I said, dude, that tells me everything I need to know. I said, who in the hell's been, and he's been spending this money for over six months? That's a lot of effing money. I mean, that's just a lot of money. That goes against everything that I, I, I beg you guys not to do. First and foremost, you work on all the shit that's free. Google My Business is free. YouTube is free. Facebook is free, but Facebook... Facebook can kill you because if you deal with the leads that come from Facebook, man, you're wasting a lot of time. Uh, and then I told him, I said, most of, I said, I said, more important than getting the phone to ring, more important than having the leads come in, is how we answer the leads. And the service that he's using, uh, I know pretty well, know the guy that and developed it, and I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of these automated. Uh, bots, Facebook bots, and uh, just type it all in and have a computer answer for you. That's all bullshit. I mean, that's just being fucking lazy. You need to have someone answer your phone, whether it's you or an office manager. You need to make a connection with people. You need to build a relationship with people. When people call you, they want to talk to you. Uh, even when they're emailing and texting you, they want to be talking to you or someone at your office. Not freaking putting in your answers. And I mean, it's just it's just a bad way to do business. I mean, you can waste all the money you want. That's, you know, God bless you. That's for you. But to think I'm going to sit there and, and sugarcoat it and tell you that, oh, man, it's, it's going to be okay. It's like, no, man, I'm, I'm not about that. It just, it just ain't going to happen. But I don't know. I think every day I'm going to start doing a live rant. Hey, so let's get into today. Today's podcast, Dominate Your Trade. Anyway, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Ring the bell so uh, you get notified once I, we upload a new video. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Mental martial arts. Defend yourself against your toughest opponent. Boom. Break through all barriers and negative habits of holding you hostage. I started teaching this program in 98, 97, 98. Uh, teaching martial arts my entire life. And I'm in the studio, and these guys are successful in the martial art world. They're getting different belts, they're winning the tournaments. Outside of the martial arts studio, sucks. The relationships aren't where they want it to be. Business is where they're going. Business isn't where they want to be. And they keep meeting the for advice. And again, I'm not going to do anything back. You all about your life sucks because of you. What are you going to do about it? I'm like, man, if you can be successful in here, you can be successful out there. All the principles that we use in this martial arts world, we need to be using in the real world. And, and I realized, you know, way back then that it was more important to teach mental self-defense versus physical self-defense. Because physical self-defense, after high school, you may get in one or two scraps. I don't know. Maybe. You know, depends uh, on how many 7-Elevens you go to, how many bars you hang out at. But you're going to be fighting.
remind yourself every day, all day. It's those little, oh man, the only thing keeping you from doing what you want to do is you. And I'm telling you, this, this little piece of paper right here is almost 15 years old. Uh, maybe it's probably older than that because it has all my notes and stuff. It's like, but this is a two-day program, so I'm not sure what we're going to talk about today because uh, we definitely will be here for two days. But uh, So I ended up selling my first construction company uh, was so I could hit the road and, 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 and teach this all over the country. I was hoping to be worldwide. Uh, so that, that was the whole reason we sold our first construction company. And thank God I had built a business that I could sell. And, you know, I was lucky, man. I, I sold the company. I hit the road. I got to hang out with uh, guys like Les Brown, Jim Rowland, Zig Zigler for, for many years. Uh, just, I mean, for almost, uh, almost four years. We sold everything, left California, went, went to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I told the family that if they didn't like it, we'd move back to California in three years. Uh, they didn't like it. So we had to come back to California. I was not making enough money teaching this to live in California. California is a very expensive state. Moved back here and uh, had to, you know, I didn't go back into construction immediately. I was, YouTube was just starting to, to take off and I thought, shit, I'm going to make some money doing YouTube videos. I said, well, what, what are these videos going to be about? I said, the only thing I knew was construction and karate. I wasn't going to do the karate stuff, so I did uh, I knew home makeovers was, was a big thing on television. So I was going to, I went back into construction just so I could have something to film to put on YouTube. Uh, but then I realized freaking YouTube videos is a lot of effing work. So, <laughs> and I'm lazy. I didn't want to do that. But by the time I you know, did the videos and the internet and all this other shit, the business was, was up and running. Uh, I don't know. So you, you, you've, seen, you've heard the stories. So they ended up selling that business. I didn't, I didn't want to be in it anyway. But there's always money in construction. Uh, but this was it. this was my passion: the books, the seminars. I was blessed to, to travel the country, speak to some of the people I spoke for, NASA, the Army, Blue Cross Blue Shield. I mean, it's just uh, it, it was great. It was good. Uh, but right now, man, let's let's talk about this because one, the best thing about work, and, and, and this is for contractors, man. This is contract. I'm a contractor's contractor. This is dominate your trade. The best thing about working for yourself and only is you get paid. So many people, I mean, that's why we quit and start our own business because the guy we're working for is taking advantage of us. He doesn't know as much as we know, and we want all the money. So we quit and we open our own business. The best thing about working for yourself is you get paid exactly what you work. The worst thing about working for yourself is you get paid exactly what you work. <laughs> Look, I mean, you, you, you can get mad and scream and shut the computer, turn it off, but the truth is the truth. Um, <laughs> so look at it like, I love what my Zig Ziglar one time said, uh, how, or Jim Wilson said, how you doing? He said, I don't know. Well, let's count. Let's look at your bank account. Let's count. Uh, guy's got a low bank account, probably has high cholesterol. And I was like, hey, Jim, that's, that's his little amount. But it isn't. It's like everything. Everything is connected to everything. Uh, and so you're in business for yourself. So I'm telling you, the only thing that's holding you back right now is this. It's, it's, it's the mental blocks that you have. Uh, and and so we, we do a lot of exercises during the two days. You have to do a lot of writing and, and reflecting you know, on where you were before and what you're thinking and all your beliefs and stuff. But here's the whole thing, man. It's like you really don't have to concentrate on the you the universe and now they got that new telescope that's taking pictures of like millions of universes and inside those uh, i don't know it's like galaxies and inside the galaxies of the universes I, I don't know you've seen the pictures but you don't have to focus on that because it's not about that it's uh the only thing holding you back the only thing holding you back from jumping out of bed before the alarm goes off and working on your dream building your business and it is uh is 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 this man six inches Six inches. Only thing holding you back from achieving everything that you want in the world is six inches. It's the six inches between your ears. That's it. That's it. But again, when I say you jump out of bed before your alarm goes off and start working on your business, 98% of the time when I ask contractors, they call me up and say, hey, man, I see videos. Can you help me with my mom? Shoot me an email. Hit me up on Messenger. The first thing I ask is, like, well, what is it that you want? And they start stuttering, and they don't have a stuttering problem. I'm like, no, 
if you if you don't know what it is that you want, if you don't know where it is the destination that you want to end up at, how in the hell can anybody help you get there? Much less yourself. And I don't set you on autopilot, meaning subconscious, because eighty percent of the day you're on subconscious. You're you're, you're just on autopilot. I mean, it's like Og Mandino says in the world's greatest salesman is like we're all slaves to our habits. Form great habits and be slaves. That's it, man. That's just one of the laws of the universe. You're on autopilot. But if you don't know where it is that you're on autopilot, you've got to set the autopilot. That's the whole thing, man. Buddy of mine flies planes. Uh, you've seen some of the videos where I, 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 I jump on there with him, like a seven seater jet. It's, it's cool having a friend on a plane, trust me. But even to put that on autopilot, I man, you've got to know where it is that you're headed, the destination. I think, I, I think I'm a pretty good business coach. And as the good business coach, I'm like the world's best GPS in, in your phone. And the first thing that you do when you one, well, first thing you got to do is type in the fucking address of where you want to go. Bam, right? But you got to have that information. It's hard to get out of there. Shit, the brain is connected to all this stuff. And 
a couple seconds later, your hand is to the mom, she's progressing on that weird grass, she's rubbing you, and like, oh my God, she was rubbing me on the stomach. And it's not like, it's like, so you realize at that moment that uh, you go through some pain to get to the pleasure, and it's all, and it never stops. It never stops. I mean, and it started from the beginning before, it, as you was a sperm trying to get to the end. I mean, all of it, you already won. So don't give me that bullshit. And we all started out the same. So the only, and again, it goes back to at this point and this moment, like I said, man, before you start watching this video, cut it off now because the more we get into it, I'm going to take away even more of your bullshit excuses. And that's all it is. The stories that you're telling your friends and yourself of why it is that you're not doing anything. Oh man, I get this, or oh man, I get that, or this nigga, man, this, that, or like all the bullshit. They're all excuses, man. If one person did it, you can do it. And no matter what it is you're trying to achieve, let me bring it to you, it's probably already been achieved. And if not exactly, it's probably pretty freaking close, and there's and there's who's left behind. And man, I tell you, the is watching. What's up, brother? Grab uh, something to drink, and we're about to get the other way. So we went. Only to stop you. Not the universe, not the six inches, two things. Fears and beliefs, and I'll take it away right now. So the fears, the fears you brought on yourself, man, that's it. The thing, the, there's one thing stopping you, and that's your beliefs. From, I'm telling you, man, from all these universes, the six inches between your ears, uh, the two things you're going with fear and the beliefs. Like, the only thing really, 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 really stopping you is the belief system. It's your belief system. If I could do anything for you, it would be to, to wipe the slate clean and take away all of your belief system. Oh, Brian, I'm a Christian, man. I grew, I grew up on Muslim, Brian. Oh, man, I'm Buddhist, Brian. I'm, like, I'm this, I'm that, whatever. Like, I'd like to just wipe it away, man. And, and I was blessed with that. But I would like to wipe that away for you because it's the belief systems. And, and it really boils down to this because you say, well, shit, Brian, the belief system. The belief, how, how are our belief systems formed? Because we're not born with beliefs. I mean, you know, it's, that, that, you know, we pay the woman, it's the conversation of the bottom of all that stuff, but from that time, you, you, these neurons in the brain start connected, it's the conversations that you hear everywhere, it's it, everything that you think you know right now, everything you think you believe right now, you only know and you only believe because of the conversations you've had or heard with other people and the books that you've read, and, and most of the books I'm, re I'm listening to, and that's it, none of it is real, None of it is real. You've just sucked into believing it. Again, you got the word believing it. Because you're, you're hearing these conversations, you're seeing some stuff. There's some universal truths that we have to deal with. And this is one of them. But you've got to understand and say, well, well shit, man. How do I change those beliefs? What causes the beliefs? All of that. And it's this one thing, man. Your thoughts. It's the thoughts that you have, the thoughts that you dwell on. That's what controls everything. Whoever controls your thoughts control you. That's why during the pandemic, the COVID BS, the news, the media, all this other shit is, man, they, they, they show it to you over and over and over and over again, sub, you know, subliminal, so sub, subconsciously, you don't even understand how the brain is uh, uh, sucking it in and you're not even paying attention to it, how your beliefs are being formed. It's, you've got to take control of that. Whoever controls your thoughts controls you. And the beliefs are, are like, my daughters, both my daughters are musicians. But uh, you think like that, that, that at three, four years old, your kids start talking, they dance a little bit. You see these videos online, the kids are always cute, they're dancing or they're singing. But uh, your daughter comes home, she sings a little bit. And you, you're like, oh my God, my baby, she sings so good. She, oh, honey, high five, you sing so good, you sing so good. So she hears it over and over again. So she starts to believe it. But at the same time, I'm six years old, she knows, hey, mom and dad, they say I do everything great. I, I don't know. Can I sing? I don't know. Friends come over to the house, relatives come over to the house, like, oh man, sit down, my baby go sing. All your friends are like, shit, I gotta listen to another one of those songs. But you make the daughter sing for them, and then all the relatives and the friends, they high five and they go, oh my baby, you sing so good, you sing so good, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the daughter's like, you know, maybe I can't sing, maybe so the belief gets a little bit strong. But then the kid's like, ah, I don't know, that's my mom's friend. Well, they just they probably got to say that. But, uh, and then they go to school, they join these little contests, and uh, what do they call it? Like the, uh, the, the auditions and the, uh, the, 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 the do the talent show. 
chills. That's it, man. Thank you, Rock. And so you're the talent chills, man. They sing and they give it the heart out. And all the friends and the teachers are like, oh, man, you sing so good. You spill TV. Blah, blah, blah. So they really start to believe it, man. They believe it. They believe it. They believe it. I mean, it's hardcore belief. And the only time they're told the truth is when they go to American Idol and remember when Simon Cowell used to be there? <laughs> and you could hear these people on TV and they couldn't sing a little bit. But they would get mad and want to beat Simon up and the camera, it was, it was entertainment for TV people because the camera would follow them out to the car and they'd be screaming and cussing and kicking the cans over. So you don't need nothing, they don't know that I, I've been singing it. And you heard them and you know it's like uh, two cats fighting in the alley and you're thinking, oh my God, what made them think they could sing? It's because they heard it over and over and over again and that belief is like that deep to where you can't get through to anything. And that's what these and that's happening to us over and over and over again to where we're not even paying attention to it. But we've got these beliefs, and we're not told you, we're all 80% of the day we're, we're on autopilot. So we're not even paying attention to what's really going on and what we think and what's happening and why we're doing certain actions. I mean, just most of the time, I'm going to tell you, you've got to pay attention. Uh, Read the book James Allen, As a Man Thinking. Read it over and over and over again. I should have brought my copy out here. It's really thin, easy to read, but at the same time, it's not easy to read. Because you can read one sentence a hundred times and, 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 and kind of get something different from it. And you'll read the whole book and then you set it down and you go back three or four months later and read it again and you'll see stuff that you didn't realize before. And each time you read it, it's going to get a little bit better. But it's, it's whoever controls your thoughts. Uh, gotta write this down. It's, it's 4 30, and, and I don't know, maybe we'll do two part, three part of this. But the only thing God gave you 100% control over, you gotta get this. The only thing God gave you 100% control over is, is there's three things, and, and, and those three things are this what you do with your body, what you put in your body, and the thoughts that you dwell on. And, 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 and they're that important. Everything else is outside of your control. Uh, when you're setting goals, the goals that you're setting have to be in your control. If the goals are something to do with someone else or this or that, it's like that. It, it has to be in your control. It has to be your goals. Uh, so it's what we do with our body. Sitting there watching Netflix or you're getting up every morning, you're getting up 30 minutes early so you can walk for 20 minutes and just clear your head. And then you maybe you're exercising or whatever. But it's what you do with your body. Man, nobody controls that but you. What you put in your body. And I kind of say what you put in your body, but again, and do with your body. And it is in your control. And I'm not trying to give you no escapes. I'm not giving you no more fucking excuses. But what I'm telling you is because of the way that we're bombarded with commercials and posters and ads and conversations with other people is, yes, it's your, it's you control it. But you don't even realize what's going on to where next thing you know, you think you're going to start eating healthy and that lasts for like a half a day. And then you're wondering what the fuck happened. And you thought you were going to work out all week and maybe you got one day of the workout. But it's because if you're not writing it down, if you're not taking and it's in it's in my podcast, dominatretrade.com podcast. You go all the way to the bottom and there's probably eight or nine audios. Uh, probably more than that, 12 audios called Mental Martial Arts, and they're all different. But two of those are uh, 21 Day Mental Diet. And that's for, for 21 days, you've got to be in total control of your thoughts almost every minute of the day. And there's a notebook that can kind of go with you. Uh, I think I got a PDF. Hit me up and, and I'll send it to you. But it's uh, you're always writing down. Every 15 minutes of the day, you're writing down what you just thought of the last 15 minutes. What's going? You need to stay and conscious awareness of what's going on. You've got to, you, you've got to be aware of all this outside information that's coming in. Because when you're not, you're not, you're not, I hope that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, uh, hey, Rock, I'm hey, Rock, 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 Rock. Say it again. You hear me? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Keep, keep like that. Hang on, hang on. I think I can hit mute. Damn. I didn't want to hit mute because I want you to cor correct me when I'm saying shit wrong. Uh, Taylor, Jim, JB said, I feared it. I feared it all at one time, but now we are gold. Look, you're on earth. Surround yourself with great people. That is it. A lot of it is 
who you surround yourself with. Um, so it's what you put in your body, what you do with your body, man. You've got to, you've got to get that. And uh, you know, I've always got my journal and my pen right there. It's like you've got to be writing it down and rewriting it and paying attention and rewriting it and knowing what's going on. And that third one is the, the thoughts that you dwell on. You're not going to be able to control the thoughts that pop into your mind because that's just bam. It's the thoughts that you dwell on because you got to ask yourself, why am I thinking that right now? What's going on? You've got to be the one that's in control of your thoughts. Whoever controls your thoughts controls you. You've got to understand that. We think in the pictures. Our thoughts. I should type this out and put it. In, I'm, I'm going to type this out and put it into the uh, to the comment section, or or write it down, replay this. But we think in pictures. You got to get that because uh, and that's and, and that's important. And and as I was doing this through the through the '90s, I've always been like when when I started grasping what business was and business really is relationships and uh, marketing is relationships. And remember, I told you, whoever controls your thoughts controls you. So when you're doing marketing and advertising and even sales, uh, and sales is like way down on the list because marketing is honestly, marketing is sales on steroids. Because when you do marketing the right way, the sale is over. They just show up with money going, hey, ready to hire you, that type of thing. Uh, but it's the sales and the marketing. Now, this, whoever controls you controls uh, whoever controls your thoughts controls you. So that's what advertising and marketing is. So if I can write the ad right, if I can do the marketing right, I get to control your thoughts. And if I can control your thoughts, I can control you. It's almost like shooting fish in a barrel. Not fair. And that's what all of this really is about. I, I want you to understand yourself. And when you do understand yourself and how you think and what makes you take actions, you're going to be able to understand how other people think and get them to take actions. And they really don't even know. Is it fair? Not really. Is it deceptive? I don't know. It depends on how you use it. You can have like a superpower. If you're a single young man right now and you learn this, you're going to be, you know, in heaven's gate. I don't know. But so that's the whole thing. We're thinking pictures because our neurons is, uh, so if I say to you right now, and we're running out of time. If I say to you, Mike is riding his bicycle down the street in front of his house. Think about that. Mike is riding his bicycle down the street in front of his house. So if you're thinking about that, right now you're picturing who Mike is. Maybe it's you, maybe you got a friend named Mike. You're picturing the bike, uh, riding his bike down the street in front of his house. So you're picturing the street. A lot of people, every time I'm, 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 I'm in a live audience, thousand people or more, I'll say, hey, raise your hand if you had a picture of Leave it to Beaver Street, the trees overlapping and stuff. 80% of the people will raise their hand. I don't know why, maybe that's the street that they wish they were riding a bike on. I don't know. But you have those pictures in your head. But if I say to you, man, I was on eBay today. I found a trial bike. It was only $1,500. I, I, had to, I, I didn't even wait for the, the, the bid. Man, I, I, I paid and I, I hit that button, buy now. I was like, man, I found a trial bike for only $1,500. Woo, score. So right now, if you don't know what a trial bite is, you think, what the fuck? You're going buy it for $1,500 on eBay. Crazy son of a bitch. He's making too much money. So you say, man, trial bite, trial bite. So right now, the brain, the neurons are firing off because it needs to come up with a picture. You with me? And if you're, if you're watching right now, any, no matter when you're watching, put in the comments if you, if you see what I'm saying. Because if you don't know, if, so you think, shit, man, what's a trial bite? What's a trial bite? You try to come up with a picture. You're trying to come up with a picture. So I tell you, a trial bite is the oldest fossil known to man. So right now you're thinking, man, fossil, seventh grade science, I know fossils, something to do with dirt, dinosaurs, things in, you know, old, whatever, old. so you're almost starting to get a picture. So I'll say, man, a trilobite fossil looks like a cockroach laying on its back with, with the feet like this, boom. So, it, 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 and that's exactly what it looks like, a cockroach on its back with its feet up. So now you go, oh shit, cockroach, I know what a cockroach looks like. <laughs> on his back, boom, boom, boom. So now you like you've got the pictures in your brain to connect because you know what a you know, you know seventh grade science class fossils, dirt, trilobite, cockroach on his back, feet up. I've given you enough information that I can connect the dots to where you can put a picture together to where you're going. Oh shit! Now I know what a trilobite is, and I ain't paying fifteen hundred dollars. Brian is crazy. You, I was right. You with me? You, you got to get this because when you're talking to clients, when you're advertising, when you're doing sales, 
is you can't leave anything to chance. You've got to paint the picture in their mind. And the only way we get to do that is with stories and read that book, Story Cell, uh, and describing it. And that's why, <clears throat> that's why I spend so much time begging you guys to do one before and after pictures. It always has to be together. I don't want, because I don't want to leave anything to chance. I don't want them guessing about what they should be picturing. You got to get this. I've got to control their mind. I've got to control their thoughts. Yes, it's deceptive. Yes, it's shooting fish in a barrel, but I got to do it. I got to do it. <clears throat> so we think in pictures. Our thoughts would dictate our emotions. Our emotions guide our actions, and our actions determine our results. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to try to remember later on. If I don't remember to put that in the, in the comments, somebody hit me up about it. We think in pictures. Our thoughts dictate our emotions. And you got to get that because it's our emotions that make us take action. Whether we're pissed off and arguing with the wife, or you're getting out of the car at 7 Eleven and somebody bangs it, whatever, you get emotional. Like right now with COVID and politics and this, and it's like everyone's emotional. Whether it's a good emotion or a negative emotion, it's our emotions that will make us take action. Fear or flight, and you're scared, and you're running, or this, happy, laugh, sad. It's the emotions that make us take actions. It's our actions that give us our results, nothing else. You can sit around all day long and kumbaya uh, for the meditate bullshit. And, and I'm, I'm all for meditation and deep breathing. Trust me. We'll do, we do a seminar just on that. But that ain't going to give you shit. Like, uh, <laughs> I used to say this. The Amish have a saying called, but now I work with some Amish. I better ask them before I keep saying this because I don't know if it's true. But the Amish have a saying it's a move your feet as you pray, meaning don't just pray, do something, man. Take some action. The only thing is, I used to have this poster when I first started doing this shit. Uh, I had a poster. I don't know. I got I to have a picture of the poster anyway, but it was me pointing like a dork. Uh, and the, the caption was, uh, your life's successes depend on your actions. But it is, man. It's all about actions. Actions are what give you your results. Now, the results, and this is why everything is so important to always journal and write down. Because the only thing we really care about is the results. People, uh, this guy, like I was talking about earlier, at the very, very beginning of the, uh, this broadcast, he's spending 8000 on, on uh, marketing uh, and doing just, just foolishly, foolishly. But I'm asking him, well, how much profit are you making? Oh, man, and he throws out, oh, we're doing like a million and a half, blah, 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 this year. And I'm like, dude, I don't care about those numbers. The only number I care about is profit. Only number that, the only number I care about is profit. How much money is going in your pocket? That's all I care about. You throw all them big ass numbers to anybody else and let them get starry eyed. I don't care. I only care about is profit. The only thing I care about is results. You can. I don't care what your golf swing looks like. All I care about is the result. Is it getting to where it needs to go? All of that stuff. Now we look at the result, and if that's not the result that we want, this is how we build businesses. We look back, we go, okay, we back it up a step. All right, what actions are we taking that is causing these results? Now, mentally, the mental self-defense is you can't just look at the actions. Because why? Because it, you have to back it all the way up to your thoughts. You've got to be the one controlling your thoughts. Because, again, 80% of the time you're on autopilot. We've got to get you to form great habits and be a slave. Go on autopilot, but you've got to know the direction that you want. You've got to plan it out. You've got to write it down. You've got to form new beliefs. You've got to form, you've got to believe so deep, like that lady that's at a scene in front of Simon Cow and he tells her the truth about how she's saying, and she's fighting and knocking the camera and kicking over the trash cans. It's, it's like, you're like, shit, man, she really believes it. She ain't acting. No, you've got to believe it. How we form that belief. Because we hear the same thought over and over and over and over again. <sighs> no, look, man, where are we at? 4:34. Yes, there's CREV, creatine. It's uh, an amino acid that, as because you get bombarded with so much shit all day long from all different directions, the brain is always trying to get rid of it. It's like, man, man, that shit ain't important. This ain't important. This ain't important. Brain only has two purposes: keep you alive, keep you safe. That shit's coming in over and over and over again. So repetition is the key to learning because of CREB, creep, the amino acid is because the brain is trying to erase everything, short-term memory. It's trying to get rid of it, trying to get rid of it, trying to get rid of it. Uh, so you've got to 
over and over and over and over again. Now you can bypass that repetition is the key to learning when you apply it with a, a, an extreme strong emotion. But then it gets seared into your brain almost like a brand in a cow. Meaning, if you've got a puppy, six months old puppy, that's, you're loving this puppy, you're 13 years old, puppy gets out of the house, runs out in the street, you watch it get hit by a car. No matter how much you want to forget that, it will never leave you because of the emotion that, that's seared into your brain. Do you get that? And that's how you've got to make something. So you got to put emotions with it. So, and, and the fear is one of them, uh, laughter is one of them. It's uh, it's when we do, when I'm doing trainings for two days and and even two hours, and uh, I should try to be doing more of it now, but it's hard to do over Zoom over the internet. You got to be in the room with each other. But fear and sex sell, uh, and, and, and here's why. And this ain't this ain't in my notes. I'm just this is a little extra bonus for you. But fear sells because remember I told you. Uh, the, body, the brain only wants to keep you alive, keep you safe. That's why a negative ad will outsell a, a positive ad 10 to 1 all the time. It's because the brain doesn't care about uh, butterflies and rainbows and all that stuff. And uh, you walk around a newspaper and it's like, oh man, another 72 perfect degrees a day. It's a beautiful blah, blah, blah. No attention. You see nuclear war and Russia and China and COVID and all that shit. And you're like, the brain's like, oh, what the hell? I, I better pay attention to this. Man, I gotta keep this guy alive, gotta keep him safe. Blah, 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 blah. Boom. So the fear, and, and here's and, and here's why fear and sex sell equally, equally, is because of the senses, whether it's the your your sight is that much crisp and better, your hearing is that much better, uh, touch is that much better. Uh, the taste is that much better. Uh, the hairs stand up on your head. It's like, man, when you're watching those scary movies, all senses are alert, man, because of the brain is like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And you're walking into a room, you know, and, and you guys been in the army, you're getting ready to pop down the door, break open the door and stuff. Man, you're like, boom, that adrenaline, boom, boom, boom. The only other time that happens is during sex, if the sex is good. Gotta say that. <laughs> I guess there's some, a lot of you guys are watching, but Brian, there's no such thing as bad sex. And I, I hear you, I'm with you, but uh, when the sex is good, man, just like fear, all of your senses are on high alert, the hair stand up, all of that stuff. So uh, you, so when you can mix in all of the senses and the emotion, you, you've got the chance of searing in a memory that you want. Rather than that, it's repetition, 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 repetition. Write it down, write it down, read it, all of it. Writing is a direct line to the subconscious mind. Ah, let's move forward. Your toughest opponent is you. The brain has two functions, keep you alive, fear is number one. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna kind of slow down and uh, if you guys got some questions, unmute Doug. But I wanna kind of, is, um, you, you hear stuff like, I want a balanced life. And again, remember, we think in pictures. So if I tell you, oh man, or if you hear, or you say to me, I want a balanced life, I'm going to say, well, describe that in a picture. I'm saying, because when you think about balanced life, you know, think about, oh, balanced life, and you, there's books on balanced lives and audios and books and all the seminars and a balanced life, balanced life. So we're thinking is a balanced life. And when I say balance, when I say, hey, man, what, what, what do you think about when you think balance? And a lot of people will say, like, uh, the balance beam from uh, the Olympics and gym, uh, gym, you know, what is it, the gym, uh, uh, what is it, the gymnasium stuff. The balance beam, uh, someone always pictures the lady, of the blind lady of justice with the scales. But, so that's the whole thing is, I know you guys can see this board, is, so if I say picture balance, you want a balanced life, and I say, is this is this balance? And you go, Brian, come on, man. The damn the, the piece of paper has lines. You, you say, no, 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 that ain't balance. So what so what needs to happen to get this balance? So this side needs to go up, this side needs to go down. Uh, so maybe I do this. You go, shit, you just made it worse. That that definitely ain't balance. Uh, 
and you see what I'm saying, right? Give me a thumbs up and uh, and let me know. See, so, so it's this way. I went, I went too far, but if I follow this, boom, and I say, is that balance? And everybody's like, whoa, finally the son of a bitch got it. That's balance right there, Brian. I want a balanced life. And what I'm telling you is. There's no such thing as a balanced life. If you got a friend in the hospital, he's hooked up to the heart monitor. You go into the hospital to visit to him, visit him. You look over at the heart monitor and you see this. You're yelling, oh shit. I've seen enough house episodes that you're, you're screaming, hey man, cold blue, cold blue. He, the dude is flatlining. You know, they're like, they run in, they 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 grab him the defibrillator, and they're like, clear to food. Turn it up, clear. You got that? So when you look over there and with this high and lows, the beep beeps, you know he's alive, man. It, it's it's the highs and lows in life that let you know you're alive. You cannot have one without the other. You've got to get this. Life is about this emotional roller coaster, and it's up to you to learn how to enjoy the ride. Because you're not going to always be down here. You're not going to always be up here. But you definitely don't want to be here. That's dead. Comfort kills. You've got to get out of that comfort zone, man. Comfort will kill you. You need the highs and the lows. And sometimes that's what it takes, man. The liberator, boom, shocking you. What, what is that? A, a divorce, a death in the family, getting fired, getting laid off, uh, all of that shit. Sometimes you need that. Because, uh, because right now you're just going along. Going along, going up, trying to get by. Oh man, you know me. Uh, I'm doing it, baby. I'm do no man. Come on, wake up in pain. Go to bed late. Get up early. All of that stuff. But you got to determine what it is that you want. Uh, let me flip this. Does that make sense to you guys? So don't give me that shit about oh, man. We want to balance life. We do this. No, 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 no such thing. And sometimes when you, when, when you're growing, you got it. You're going to be out here for a long time. Everything's going to be work, 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 make those videos, make those videos, before and after pictures, before and after pictures, Google my business, Google my business, YouTube, YouTube, name, address, phone number, all that shit that I keep begging you to do about growing your business. You're going to be down here. You ain't got no time for this. No time for that. Not now. Not now. You're going to be down here for a long time so you can spend more time up here. But even here, it's going to always be that way. It's going to always be something. Always going to be something. Right. Right now, everybody watching this, you're either in something, coming out of something, or you're headed for something. And that's just the way it is. It's like, Brian, Ryan, don't, hey, don't ask me. I, ain't my universe. Ain't, no, 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 no. It's like, ask, ask, you know, ask someone else. Like, well, why is that? Like my friend Jim Rome would say, I wouldn't sign up for that class. It's, <laughs> it's like, I don't know why. It's just, it's just the way it is. And it's the way it's going to be. You know, someday the wife will love you. Someday she ain't. Someday the kids will love you. Someday they ain't. Someday the guy's going to show up for work. Someday they ain't. All of that stuff, man. It's an emotional roller coaster. It is up to you to determine how to enjoy that ride. Throw your hands up, man, and and, and say, hey, woo! It's like, because there's, there's only so much you can do about it. What can you do about it? We already talked about it. There's only three things you have 100% total control over. What you put in your body, what you do with your body, and then what you dwell on. Bam. Now, what I'm going to give you right now is everything. This is everything. And uh, what is it? And JB said successful people jump into an idea not knowing how to do it and figure it out. Comfort kills. You got that right now. Just, you got to just, just start. Just start. What is love? Man, love is it. My buddy. Les Brown sitting at dinner, he would tell you is uh you don't have to be great to get started, but you got to get started to end up great. I've heard that a hundred times. I've said it a thousand times. You do not have to be great to get started, but you've got to get started to end up great. And so many people want to get everything, all this stuff. And by the time you get all your ducks in a row and everything ready, it's probably too late. Now, with that being said, I still want you to do your due diligence. All right, so here we go, and I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to give you this right here, and we're going to get out of here. And this is everything. I can actually do this, and wouldn't have to do anything else. So this, the whole two-day seminar, right now. Right now. 
Wait for it. Let me go. <laughs> All right, so here we go. One, you've got to decide. Like when you read Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, it's definitions of purpose. Definitions of purpose. You've got to have the purpose. You've got to know what it is that you want. With that being said, you got to wait for this because this, this is everything. So don't go nowhere. Let me tell you, is, so I grew up in North Carolina, I grew up in the projects. Uh, I'm nine years old and I never miss a Sunday to go to church. Every Sunday morning, uh, I'm out on the sidewalk, the church bus comes through the projects and you know, picks up people, you know, like different little places. They just, they drive through. They, they usually go through the week, during the week, they pass down flyers, all that stuff. So I've been going for a while now. They know I'm there. And uh, so I'd be, I'm the only one in my family goes to church. Nine years old, I'm standing out on the sidewalk. I'm dressed in whatever I think is my best clothes. Because back then, you used to get dressed up to go to church. Nowadays, shorts and flip-flops, you know, I, I don't know. It's a different day. But I'm, I'm standing on the sidewalk. Church bus picks me up, takes us to church, brings you back. And they drop you off. And when they drop you off, they give you a candy bar. And I'm like, man, okay, okay, okay. So uh, what I got to tell you is I didn't go to church because I was so religious and into the Lord and loving all that stuff. I went to church because I knew if I was outside on the sidewalk Sunday morning waiting on the church bus, I wouldn't be inside when the drunks woke up. Plain and simple, for me, it was a way out. Uh, our house was the, the, the drunk house, and I, it, for me, it was an escape. And uh, like I said, when they dropped you off, they give you that candy bar. So I was killing two birds with one stone. So nine years old, stepping off the church bus, and before the, the bus driver, you know, pulls that thing and shuts the door, he's yelling, Brian. So I turn around, look at him, and I'm like, I'm holding on to my candy bar a little tighter because I ain't giving that back. And he says, uh, he's a Brian. So I look at him, he says, what you gonna do when you grow up? And I'm looking at him, I'm looking at the apartment I'm getting ready to walk into, I look back at him, and I said, man, I don't have a clue what I'm going to do when I grow up, but I know exactly what I'm not going to do. And he nodded his head, he shut the door, and he drove away. Because I know it, like right then, it was like God, the universe, whatever, planting that first seed saying, there's more to me than what's inside. There's, that's not you, man. There's something else waiting for you. And I, I didn't know what that was. Uh, so when I'm yelling at you guys, man, tell me what you want, tell me what you want. And at, at the karate studio teaching these kids, I was, uh, I don't know, I, I would do it too much. Uh, I'd make them come up with a dream they didn't even want and, and, and have them achieving dreams they didn't even want. And my wife was like, hey, well, you got to stop that shit. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, uh, you know, that story you tell when you're a nine-year-old, you, you didn't know what you wanted, you know, but you knew what you didn't want. And I was like, man, that makes sense. So if you do not know what it is that you want, you've got to start there. You can know exactly what you don't want and work backwards. And that's kind of what I did. Uh, I had no clue. I, was, I mean, I don't know, 50-something right now. And I still don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up. Uh, but I knew what I didn't want. And I knew my kids weren't going to be on welfare. I knew I wasn't going to be you know, begging, borrowing, stealing from Peter to pay Paul and all that shit. Uh, I knew that wasn't me. And I knew other people had made money, and, and, you know, it's like, so I could. I didn't mind working in my hands. I could, you know, get in. That's why I said it's like, I love construction. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. It's because I know how hard we work in construction, and you guys can, man, build the business that you want if you know what it is that you want type of thing. I knew, uh, so the construction was my way out, that type of thing. But then I ended up working 80 hours a week, and I'm like, fuck, I might as well work for somebody. I'm better off. Luckily, I met a guy who said, look, man, if you got to be there, it's not a business, it's a job. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? If I'm not here, who's doing it? <laughs> so it's just all of everything I'm sharing with you guys is, is, is stuff that I went through. It works if you work it. Uh, so it is, you, you've got to, so, so I knew, and like Anthony James from Social and Design and Bill, man, he wants to conquer the world. God bless him, maybe he will. Uh, I'm just alone for the ride. I didn't want to ever work that hard. I knew exactly how much money I needed to live comfortable, and I mean comfortable, uh, and spend days at, uh, we spent more days at Disney before they, uh, this, this COVID crap than anything, or up in the cabin, or on vacations, so I knew I needed to build a business that ran itself, all of that, so everything I'm teaching you guys, is that's why, that was my thing, so whatever your thing is, 
So you might like, uh, it, it starts with, if you don't know exactly where it is that you want to go, then where do you not want to go? You can start there and you got to really write it down and you got to rewrite it and you got to write it down again. And every day you got to write it down. Every week you got to write it down. You got to keep remembering yourself. And here's, and, and, and that's what this is. So it's like, man, blah, 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 blah. So Archimedes says, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. And you got to get that. And uh, my wife used to say, well, man, you got to describe that better. You're talking about people thinking pictures. Nobody knows what a lever is and this and that. I'm like, man, come on, as kids, we, we, we take a stick or a piece of pipe, and we're trying to tear some shit up. We, we know exactly how to get a rock and put it underneath it, and we're jumping up and down on it. I'm going to pick this thing up. And as a kid, a little boy anyway, man, you know how to do that just naturally. <laughs> it's like, but, and that's the whole thing is give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I should move the world. So what that looks like is this, is what, what your it, whatever your it is, the business you want to build, the book you want to write, the dream that you want to have, I want you to do this. It. Not the movie It. <laughs> and although it's a fear scary movie, so maybe that should be it. Because we'll do more to avoid pain than we will to 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 gain pleasure. So whatever this is, it is a so if you got a, a, a lever to pick it up, so you got this little lever. Boom, it made it a little bit bigger. So you got this lever and you're trying to pick that up. Now you need a fulcrum. You got to put something underneath it. Like I said, kids, little boys know what that is. So you got to have right here. So now when I'm trying to achieve this, when I'm trying to achieve this and pick this up, I've got this lever and I've got this fulcrum. So your dream, your it is right here. This fulcrum is knowledge. Knowledge, the books, the CDs, my videos, uh, YouTube channel, all of it. I'm telling you, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, it's probably already been achieved. Uh, no offense to you, but there's enough knowledge out there. See, if knowledge was all we needed, if knowledge was all you needed, everybody would be rich, skinny, and healthy. You get that? Because the knowledge is already there, especially now with this internet. The knowledge is there, and if knowledge was all you needed, everybody would be rich, skinny, and healthy. It's not. It's, see, but you can get the knowledge, man. It's like some people, their dream is, is, is this big, like a little dot, and the knowledge is always like, man, I need more knowledge. I need more knowledge. I got to do this. And I was like, no, man, just do something. Take some action. But So if I'm trying to pick this up, you can see with this short lever, it's going to be not so easy. So Archimedes says, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. So when I make that a little bit longer, it gets a little easier to pick up. A little bit longer, a little bit easier to pick up. A little bit longer, a little bit easier to pick up. When you have a big enough why, the how won't matter. The how won't matter. When you have a big enough why, and that's what that lever is. That's your why. You've got to have a reason. If you don't have a reason, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. The bigger you can make this lever, the longer you can make that lever, the more why you have, the easier it's going to be. You, you and when you have a big enough why, you don't, like, like, like JB just said, man, you just jump in. You just start doing it. You're going to figure this shit out later because you've got so much reason to do it. You've got to have that why. And I don't know what your why is. You got to, I mean, you do. And you can write it down, write it down, write it down, come up with all the reasons. Uh, and, and, and don't let them be all the good reasons. We used to do, years ago, we do this dream board. Uh, and and I, I mean, I, I used to sell them, dream boards. And we do an hour, two hours of the seminar would just be this dream board, and everybody would bring these magazines, and we could cut out these 
planes that they wanted to buy and the mansion they wanted to live on and the horses and the cars and the boats and well you plaster all this stuff that you want and, and ours was called cba curtis Bryant Adams. it was called conceive believe achieve uh and, and you plant that big beautiful poster on the wall and you're looking at this thing every day every day every day and i'm telling you that's bullshit you need a nightmare board you need to cut out all the pictures of the bullshit that if you don't achieve your dream, what it's going to be like. It was telling you, for me, it was I didn't want my kids on welfare. I put up with a lot of shit from my wife because I didn't want my kids growing up without a father. Uh, There's just a lot. Of, I got my ass beat every fucking day at Kaji Kimbo Karate because I didn't want to be able to not protect my wife and kids. Uh, I didn't want to be that guy at 7 Eleven. It's like I knew all the negative shit. I'm telling you. You need a nightmare board. Put all the ugly shit on there, you know, bankruptcy and house and getting reposed and all, all this ugly stuff because that's what's going to make your ass get up and take action. And you need kind of both of it because you, the dream that you're going to maybe get someday, but I'm telling you, it's like you hit the snooze button over and over and over again, but when you smell the smoke and you hear the fire alarm, your ass gets up. So you, you, I'm telling you, Lance Brown used to say, man, you want to get back on your feet? Miss a couple of car payments. I was so broke, I walked past the ATM and the alarm would go off. You've got to have that why. And some of that why may be because of all the negative shit that you don't want. I'm telling you, you're going to do more to avoid pain and fear than, than, than what you're going to do to gain pleasure. Because all those fancy shit that you want, the cars and the boats and the vacations, if you wanted that shit, you'd already fucking have it. The only thing holding you back is you. That's how we started this. It's you. Unfortunately, it's you. But fortunately enough, it's you. Because if it's you holding you back, it's you that can propel you forward. No matter, don't give me the stories about how you grew up. Man, it's like, they used to come into the karate studios and I'd like, man, what's going on, brother? Man, get in the office, man. Let me put you in a chokehold. Put you in a wrist lock. I said, man, what's going on, man? Why are you doing this? I said, oh, man, you don't understand. I did, did, did this. I said, brother, you, 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 you come to the wrong place looking for a pity party. Sit down, let me tell you a story. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this, and, and I tell him my story. I said, it's like, you know, my brother's still homeless in Salt Lake City. My, my uh, other brother at age 22 knocked in the head and, and buried and, and threw in the river, pulled out eight days later, buried as a John Doe. I mean, it's over and over again. I was like, man, everybody's got a fucking story, right? It's your story. It's not good, not bad, whatever. It's what it is. Everything that you've went through, you've went through to make you better. Everything, write this down. Everything that happens, happens to serve you. Everything that happens happens to serve you all right ladies and gentlemen with that we're going to call it a wrap uh no matter when you're watching this uh reach out to me shoot me uh, some messages i will answer them i'm telling you as you get better everything in your business will get better and you look outside of all this other shit and you're going to be blaming i can't find employees uh, i can't charge homeowners enough i can't do this i got I paid this marketing guy. He ripped me off. I got this like, it's, it's all excuses, man. The answers are here. You've got to be the one to find those answers. You've got to be the one to take the actions. You've got to write it down. You've got to look at the results. You've got to track it. Everything has to be tracked uh, in your business life and in more importantly, in your personal life. Anyway, whoo, oh man, next week we're going to talk about employees. I was going to do that today. Uh, I threw the question up. Everybody said, no, 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 man, do that MMA thing, mental martial arts. Uh, but next week, we're, we're going to do employees for sure. Because uh, I'm so sick of hearing that effing question and see people talk about it. Only, I can't find employees. No shit. But you can't find employees because nobody wants to work for you. Mental martial arts, man. The more you get better, the more everything in your life will get better. Uh, again, man, share this with someone you know. Uh, click the links below. Subscribe to the to the channel, and we will see you again. Uh, another episode, Brian Allen, here, the contractor's contractor. Been an episode of Dominate Your Trade podcast. Thank you guys.